Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hostess, Miss Miranda Hart. Miranda met Bruce. I am very excited. I will be chatting to a true television legend. Don't know if you can guess who it is. A uh, slight clue in the title <laughs> and in all the massive pictures. <laughs> I should point out, actually, this, uh, this is a set. OK, it's not my home. I'm not a stalker. I don't have Brucey wallpaper all over my house. <laughs> We're just in the bedroom. <laughs> Moving on. No, I hope you like it. Yeah. Thank you. And I even have a house band. Get ready. It's only McFly! <laughs> they are lovely. No wallpaper of them, though. I've just got to do the umbilicus. <laughs> Moving on. So, hello, boys. How are you? You all right? Very good. Yeah. How are you doing? You well? OK. Shush yeah. now, please. It's not all about you. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to bring on my guest. So excited. He really is one of the greats. And for those of you who don't know that, if you're a younger Strictly viewer, perhaps, or for those who are stupid enough to have forgotten, you are in for a real treat as we talk through his career and celebrate his utter brilliance. So, without further ado, please welcome the one, the only, Sir Bruce Forsyth! <laughs> Oh, it was wonderful. I didn't expect that, I yeah. really didn't. But what a lovely audience. Aren't they fabulous? Oh, wait till your fans get here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I tell you, before we yeah. do anything, uh, you're much taller than I thought. Oh, really? Yes, can we sit Let's down? Sit because instead. Let's I feel sit. very dominated. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I feel dominated. Bruce. I've got to get a trick in my neck. <laughs> OK, well. Yeah. What is it? And a nice set, as you just said. Do you said. like it? Yeah. It's always and a lovely to have a flamingo. <laughs> reminds me of a, a basement flat in Fulham. <laughs> Good. So I got you some nibbles. But, oh, really? Bruce, How lovely. I well, didn't know whether you're a sweet or a savoury man. I'm so, a savoury man are you? for certain things. Are you? Yes. Well, what I did was I covered all bases. Yes. So I've got here um, Battenberg with twiglets on top. Oh. <laughs> Just, Battenberg yeah. with twiglets? Yeah, a battlelet, oh. I'm calling it. <laughs> and here I've got some jammy dodgers with cocktail sausages. <laughs> so I've got what? some jammy sausages. No, I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> I'm so excited to have the chance to talk about your 70 years in showbiz. Oh, 70 well. years. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. Thank you. Thank you. In case you weren't aware, Sir Bruce is the longest serving male TV entertainer of all time. Oh. So, before. Yes! <laughs> and uh, before we get stuck into the deets, which is uh, youth speak for details, I think. Yes, oh, the uh, deets. Yes. Yeah, deets. I remember that. <laughs> then here is a 70 second roundup of the last 70 years. Shall we? We certainly shall. To see you! That independent TV personality, Bruce Forsyth. There may be trouble ahead. Oh! <laughs> but while there's moonlight and music in love and romance. You are such a lovely audience. Let's face the music and dance. You are so much better than last week. <laughs> Now, well, the minute you walked in the joint, I knew you were a man of distinction. <laughs> oh, I love working with professionals. And you've won a Brucey bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Didn't she do well? Yes. What a point, mate. Yes. 
Well, I have to see in that. I feel tired. <laughs> I, I really do, because I went through all that. I can't yeah. believe it. The time is gone. You know, any young people here, please make all you can of today, because it just rushes by. I mean, it doesn't seem like 70 years. Really? It doesn't, it really doesn't. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so lucky, yeah. Well, that is just a tiny taste of what Bruce has achieved so far. So to help us truly understand his success, what I've done is I've broken down his career into a series of manageable bite-sized chunks I'm calling Brucey Bullet Points. And what do points make? Brucey! Well, no, actually, they make very handy chapter headings for the different eras of Bruce's career. <laughs> OK. So let's start with Brucey bullet point one, which I like to call Brucey the Bright Young Thing. Hit it, band! Yeah, the bar, My yeah. house band. Yeah, we do. <laughs> I, love I love it. So, uh, we're off, we're off. My first question yes. to you would be this. Many performers, yes. they often see or hear something or meet someone that gets them hooked into oh, yeah. showbiz. Was there a particular moment for you? Fred Astaire. From the age of nine, when I first saw a Fred Astaire film and he danced, it just did something to my brain, my whole body, and all I wanted to do was dance. Fred Astaire films I'd go so, in and see at three or four times. So what was the first time you saw him then? In a uh, film? In, in, a, in a film, I think it was Top Hat. Top Hat, great. Well, let's see the clip that inspired you. Oh, Top really? Hat. Yes. Have you yes. got that? <laughs> The best ever dancer was him. But looking back, do you think it's that? Do you sort of see that moment of seeing Fred Astaire as almost like a destiny moment? Like you had to see it. That was your life. Plan. Yes, and it was the start of show business yeah. after that. But dancing was the thing that drove me mad. Yeah. And do you think your parents must have been quite intrigued? A, being told by their son they want to be a dancer, but also they must have suddenly thought, "Hang on, he can do this." Well, they were my inspiration. They yeah. inspired me to do all I ended up doing. And actually. how amazing that they were supportive, because they could have easily said, "Oh, oh no, they they wanted me." To... In fact, I think they had more ambition than I did. Really? Especially my mother, because she used to make all the little satin suits that I wore with sequins all over them. <laughs> She'd stay up till two or three o'clock in the morning making these little. Oh, really? Dancing yeah. suits, yes. Because uh, I read that you got too good for your local school, so you went to uh, Brixton, it was a five-hour yeah. round trip. Well, you see, yeah, she did. She took me all the way to Amazing. Brixton from where I lived. Yeah. This was during the war as well. I mean, bombs are falling down yeah. and all that sort of thing. And uh, that, But it wasn't the dancing I wanted to do. It was what I call English tap dancing, right. you know, which is all... Can I show you? Can I yeah. show you what I mean? Yes, please! <laughs> English, English tap dancing with all... Um, <laughs> I look a bit red at dance, you know what I'm Oh, wait a minute, no. Just a minute. It's carpet, I thought I'd gone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? For goodness sake. But you see, that was all the English tap, it's all up on the toes. Now, American tap dancing, which I loved on film, was all bent knees, all that kind of dance, yeah, which I like. Amazing. Thank you. Why did you tell me it was carpet? Sorry about that. So that was the difference. So that's yeah. what I wanted to do because that's what Fred Astaire did. So many other great dancers yeah. dance with the bent knees and the loose arms. It was much more free and easy. And what about your first TV appearance? When was that then? 
that was oh that was before the war anybody could go along you know? yeah. it was jasmine bligh anybody old enough to remember jasmine bligh <laughs> oh i feel so oh, old say yes. <laughs> those are the times i feel so old <laughs> I really do. No, I remember. It's coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah. Jas Jasmine. I thought it was Jasmine. Jasmine Bly, but she had this show that came from uh, Alexander Palace, which was the head of BBC then, and you could go along and she'd interview you and then she'd, then she'd say, well, that's been nice to talk to you. Now, if you want to get up and do your song and yeah. dance, which I did, and her final question is, well, what do you want to be, Bruce? What, what, what is your aim? I said, well, I want to be a star and buy my mum a fur coat. Oh, Could, it was a bigger one than that. Come on. <laughs> bigger than that. That's more like a bit the false. You're but you're terrible with audiences, you are, aren't you? Yeah, terrible. <laughs> terrible. I don't know what I'd do without them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's such a sweet... Because buying a fur coat would have been the sign. Oh, that of... was the that, that was that's the it. thing. If, if 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 a woman had a fur coat, that was it. She was well, she was either one thing or the other. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't mean it like that. Get out. Didn't mean it like that at all. But, but uh, yes, it was. That. And the other thing, if you were a, a, a male professional in the business, in show business, if you bought a Crombie overcoat. A Crombie oh. overcoat was the signal that he was doing well. Right. So that, those were the two things that okay. meant a lot in those days. And so in many ways, your first sort of break was auditioning for the Windmill Theatre. Yes. That just seemed like such an important place to be. You had to be there to be spotted. Yes, you had to be spotted. And uh, they, they were always very good because, you know, the girls in that show wore very, very little. <laughs> I was, about to, I was about to say, I wish I'd been around at that time. Oh. Because, because of the people that were there, like Peter no, they, Sellers, they, they Tony Hancock. No, they had the sheerest of chiffon top oh, you know, no, no. that you could see right through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it would have suited uh, me very well. <laughs> Especially being as tall as you are. <laughs> Wouldn't know where to look for the best. <laughs> <laughs> to look for the best, I would. Um, no, but you had to be careful, and yeah. I must say, I was always very self-conscious about the girls being like that, so you'd always look them, believe me, straight there. Yeah. If you dance with them, you'd look them, and yeah. you didn't want to have them looking all yeah. over you and all that. Yeah. They, they, didn't, they didn't want that. But yeah. it was a wonderful experience. I mean, you can't buy that kind of experience. Well, I was going to say, but there isn't that sort of experience anymore. Do you sometimes find yourself watching television and you can tell that someone hasn't had that sort of years of graft that you yes. guys did. You can. But you see you, if I may turn the table. Please don't. See, no. But you <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say this, because I've thought this right from the first time I saw you. You could have fitted in to my age at the start of the business. In the 50s and 60s, you'd be just as popular and just as big then as you are now. Well, it's because of the chiffon. <laughs> I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, yes, so. But you would. You, oh, you'd well, fit Chris, into all those, all those kind of people. You've got something about you that is, shall we say, ageless. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> all right. So, in 1958, after years of hard graft, Bruce got his big break on television. And earlier this week, we went on a little outing and look where we ended up. Come in, come on. After you, Got the showbiz stairs. Yes, uh, always Thank ladies you. first. I love what they wear here. Do you love yeah, what oh, they yes, wear? Uh, okay. No other West End show George. has that. That's George. Oh, you see, you know everyone. Yeah, I know everyone. <laughs> So here we are on the Palladium. We are. What's it like looking at the stage now? Are you getting nostalgic? Very much so. This theatre means... Well, it changed my life completely. Yeah. I went from a, from a summer season in, uh, in Eastbourne with just 200 people, maybe on a Saturday night, and then travelling up to London to the Palladium with 2,500 people. 
So how did it come about? Here was Sunday Night at Palladium with Bob Hope, you know, Bing Crosby, all these huge American stars, and you wangle yourself on the bill. Well, you see, there was no O2 in those days. No. There were no stadiums and all that. This, this was, was the mecca. I did have 16 years experience before I got the job, so it wasn't, I wasn't a sort of like fly-by-night yeah. person. But with me making such a hit yeah. on those first few weeks, I finished up with Sunday night at the Palladium every Sunday. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sunday night at the London Palladium. With only two channels. Yeah, of course. So people didn't have a choice like they have today. Yeah. They used to get the church service over early so that so people, people could get home. To, and the pub shut early because Sunday night at the Palladium was coming. It was enormous. I mean, you must have so many memories here, but do you have any defining favourite moment? Uh, Norma was, well, that was a, a wonderful show to do, but Norma was hard to rehearse with. because he, Oh, because he went through everything again and again and right. again. A lot of the sketches that we did, yeah. he'd done for so many years. Right. He wanted it to work. Yeah. He didn't want to do anything new. That, or the only thing new that we did on that show was the dance. <laughs> Lovely moments, yeah. lovely moments. But Norman was, uh, oh, he was so meticulous, it was unbelievable. A hugely anticipated part of it was, of course, the game Beat the Clock. It's time for Beat the Clock. We have a new jackpot which will start at £100, but we'll be seeing a little bit more of that later on. So Hello, generally Andrew. the contestants were all picked up. Yeah, on the night. Just before the show, I'd come out and I'd get two couples from the stores uh, to make it fair, you see. Yeah. One couple from the, uh, from the dress circle right. and another couple from the gods. And what do you do for a living, John? Well, I can't none of the rubbish. You're a dustman? A river yeah. dustman. Oh, you're the one we got from the top out there. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, but you said you're a what? You're a, a river dustman. A I'm, river dustman? I'm really on my lighterman, see. Oh, but, I see. Uh, but you um, collect the dustbins along the river. Well, uh... <laughs> Do you remember the potters with the shuttle cars? Oh, yeah, the, with the shuttle. They were... Mu How they did that I game. know. I mean, I was looking at the clip the other day and I just couldn't believe that the woman throws the shuttle cup and he catches it in this paper cup. Lovely. Away with it. Good, good. That's one. Two. Oh, look at this! And those prizes you gave out to them was, was a very new thing on television. They were quite expensive in those yeah. days. I loved it when the woman kissed you and you said sent her to Paris. She was so overexcited, she gave this massive kiss on the cheek and you were like, oh! You have won a weekend in Paris. <laughs> yes? Oh. Well, right. Lily. Wait until you get to Paris, dear. Control yourself. Right. Wow. Wow. Isn't this a treat? I have never stood on a stage before. Miranda, this is a treat, isn't it? How does it make you feel, oh, being back here? Brings back so many memories. You see, but it's got that atmosphere that you, you know, makes you feel good, makes you feel as though you're somebody that they're all staring at you. <laughs> I'm just imagining you coming on here for the first time when you host it. This must have been extraordinary. Oh, it was terrifyingly beautiful. Yeah. It really was. It, from the terror you got, couldn't wait to get it over with and do it. Yeah. Does it make you want to be back at that time, at that era oh, now, I'd though? Oh, I'd love to go back, because I'd enjoy it more. I'd just uh, treat it as, oh, isn't this my, yeah, sort of soak it up. Yeah. Amazing. And we may be doing a little dance, I think. Might we? Yes. Well, we've got a chorus line here, because yeah, we're doing well, chorus okay. line at the moment. Well, you see... I can't tell, I don't, I've never danced. Well, never mind, I but love but watching it. Wow. Have you got it? Does it look as I've got it? <laughs> I don't even know what it is, Bruce. That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Lovely it was there. fun, wasn't Lovely, it? Yeah. Really fun. I enjoyed that. Uh, now, we were laughing about the Potters, weren't we? Who played Beat the Clock and the yes. Shuttlecock game. Yes. 
Because we thought, how do they... Ma they managed to get three in that cup in, in, in 30, 30 seconds. seconds. How they did it, I don't know. That looked very difficult looked very to difficult. me. And I think we should maybe play it and see. What? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Are, you, are you on for it? Oh, well, we're right. Yes. Yeah. Right, let's go over here. Now, do you want to be the man, as it were, who uh, did uh, the uh, thing? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll be the woman. All right, I'm steady. I'm, I'm dropping shuttlecocks. <laughs> um, all I hope so is... So you stay there. All I hope is that this isn't a shuttlecock up. <laughs> Tom from, from oh, no, no, he's at the well, peak of his career. Good. <laughs> the peak of his career. Yeah. Make the most of it. Bro. And uh, <laughs> will you be my cock boy, if you pardon? Um, yes, I will pick up, up your shuttlecock. Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to start us off? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, now you've got. What did I used to say? I used to say you've got to get three. In the cup, in under 30 seconds, starting from now. It's getting nearer, it's getting nearer. Put the clock back. Put the clock back. <laughs> we, we didn't do it. But well, that was fun. But what that a difficult fun. game. Well, I, I got still one don't in. know. I think they were. What do you mean you got one like, in? Deal with that. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean you got one in? I got one in. <laughs> right, moving on. Right, moving ready? on. Yes. Yeah. So, with his reputation as a showbiz heavyweight secured, it's time to move on to our next Brucey bullet point, which I'm calling Brucey the 60s Song and Dance Man. Nice. Oh, there. Bit of 60s. Well, that was 60s. Yeah. I felt the 60s there. Good. Yes. During this time, Bruce was working with not just the biggest names in Britain, but the world. And to prove it, here's the 1960 Royal Variety performance with the one and only Nat King Cole, oh. Cheryl's dad. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at this. Cheryl's dad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the very, very wonderful Nat King Cole. Very good luck, you and Thank you. What's it going to be? What, what, what I'm going to sing. Um... Oh no, that's my favourite. It is. I love that. When I fall in love, it will be forever. Or I'll never fall in love. He is the best, isn't he? Yeah. He'd already been on Sunday Night the Palladium before, because that was the Royal Variety yeah. performance. And they phoned me on the Sunday morning. They said, Bruce, Nat King Cole's here, because they knew I idolised him. So they said, if you get in quickly, you can do a number with Nat King Cole. And he was one of the most gracious people I've ever met. We met backstage and uh, what we're going to do. I said, well, I think a Paper Moon would be a nice number. And I, he said, now, what, do I, what key do I do Paper Moon? I said, you do it in F, because I've learned it in F. I, I know yeah. you do that. In F. <laughs> so he, uh, he said, I think I do, Bruce. I think I do. And... 
that finished the rehearsal. We did it in five minutes, you know, because we both knew where we were going. Yeah. And do you know he spent the... The Palladium was empty, not a soul in the Palladium. They'd all gone to lunch. And he played and sang all the numbers from his latest LP, wow. just for me, in an empty Palladium. Now, that is a special man to do that, because he knew I was so interested in him. It's extraordinary. Uh, yeah, it was a wonderful moment. And did your dad see you at the Royal Variety? Did they come along? Um, yeah, my father. My mother yeah. never, never even saw me hit oh, it no. big. She was never that tough saw me. For you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, it was, because she had more ambition for me than, than I did. So yeah. I always feel very sad that ne she never saw, after all the years of sewing those little sequins onto the thing, that she never actually saw me be a big name in the business. Yeah. Always. Well, Today, it's even. Yeah. But I always say that she was up there, and I'm sure she met a couple of agents up there. <laughs> and she she's got been, me the job. I still, I still believe that to this day. And then you started doing films in the 60s as well. I did a couple of bits in films, yeah, yes. Yeah, you did... Um, well, you can't check. remember yourself. <laughs> <laughs> bed, 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 no, it's because I didn't want to say it wrong. Well, bed, bed knobs and broomsticks. Oh, yeah. That could go wrong. Yes, it could be, yeah. yes, especially look, after... There, look, there you are. Oh, that's right. I played a spiv in that. Yeah, and you that's, quite uh, spivvy there. David Tomlinson is the guy there. Was this you wanting to be in Hollywood to do films? Was this kind of, oh, I'm, I'd love I've to done have telly. I, I miss so many, like Oliver. Yes. Because I nearly got the part for Oliver, yeah. yes. Uh, Lionel Bart phoned me himself, who wrote the whole thing. Yeah. He said, we're not quite sure whether this is going to work with Ron Moody. Yeah. There's a bit of a contractual thing going on. So for a whole week, I just hung about there waiting for another phone call. And in the end, he phoned back at the end of the week. He said, Bruce, he said, I know you'd love to play. He said, but Ron, they've come to some arrangement. So he's going to do the part. Oh. And when you think of it, Ron Moody got, uh, he was nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah. So that was a big disappointment. Yeah, In fact, must... I think I'll have another cry now. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the tissues? <laughs> got no tissues. I have the oh, never mind. But did you I'll find... be all right in a minute. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on without me. You shouldn't have reminded me of that. <laughs> but we've been talking about you in the 60s. We haven't seen enough. Let's have a look at a clip. This is a clip from Whitaker's World Music. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm not one for preaching a sermon. But I've got something to say What the world needs now I'm sorry, is can you, sorry, Miranda, will you stop it? Miranda, stop it, please, I, 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 can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't see any more of that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, look at me, look at, look at that shirt. <laughs> look at that, look at me, look at that shirt. <laughs> look at me, look at that shirt. <laughs> look at that shirt. <laughs> I've got the measles or something. <laughs> I Let's can't have that. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, look, and I don't sound like that now. Do what the world needs now is love. <laughs> and it's true, when people do an impression of me, yeah. they still do an impression of me as, as, as though I'm 30 years old. They always go, nice to see you, to see you. No. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Very... Sorry, I shouldn't no, interrupt that. that that's but, absolutely fine. You know, I, I couldn't bear it's it. It's just amusing being opposite Bruce Forsyth doing an impression of himself. <laughs> 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 you try it, you try it. Nice to see you. Go on, do it. Nice to see you. Go on. So, because you don't speak like that. I don't. There you and are. That's not you. I do you don't. find it frustrating? Do you hate uh, well, it? Well, no, it makes me laugh, <laughs> actually, because I know I don't talk like that. Well, if we can't see you singing uh, yeah. then, can we see you and hear you singing now, maybe? <laughs> All right. OK. Would you? Fine. Yes. Right. Uh, so I'll introduce you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I don't want to. I don't want so, to. I don't want to walk this, across what your shop. What are you shot. doing? <laughs> the earth is going up. You could okay. have gone. Because you've the got back. your camera there. Yes, I didn't, but you could have walked back. Into that. <laughs> so, with this interpretation of the Frankie Valley classic "Can't Take My Eyes Off of You," please go wild for Sir Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you 
You'd be like heaven to touch I want to hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you Pardon the way that I stare There's nothing else to compare The sight of you leaves me weak There are no words left to speak But if you feel like I feel Please let me know that it's real You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you singing about me. <laughs> Time to move on to the next big chapter in his career. Yes, another booty bullet point, which I'm calling Talking About Your Generation Game. Thank you. <laughs> So I'm going to say it for him. During the 70s, the Generation Game was getting over 20 million viewers every single week. And my family was one of them. I loved it. It's one of the greatest game shows ever. Here's why. Take one. <laughs> like this. Starting from now. <laughs> Take four. Oh, I don't cut that out afterwards. Uh. You naughty boy. Think that about if I were you. <laughs> think I'm gonna really like this part. I love doing that show. I, I love doing it because I could fool around. I had fun doing it all yeah. the way through. And you never knew what was going to happen. Yeah. I love being in shows that you don't know what's, what's going on. Because you must have felt at the top of your game. Oh, yes, it was. And because it became hugely, hugely popular. And you were, you know, seriously famous at this point. Did you, do you enjoy being famous? Did you enjoy then? Oh, yes, although the, the, the Palladium was, was, was just as big in a way of Yeah, because what I'm intrigued by is that your, a lot of your peers at this point, so Tony Hancock or uh, Tommy Cooper, uh, you know, Eric Morecambe, they all sort of suffered from stress, from the fame and the pressure of it, whereas you seem to sort of take it in your stride. Are you much more of a calm and controlled person than those Well, I'm, I'm a much more relaxed things. person when I'm not working. People think that right. I'm that mad sort of dashing around character all the time. I couldn't stand living with him. Right. <laughs> I really couldn't stand it. So I'm much more relaxed in, in, in my personal life. OK. And, uh, and I like having the contrast between the two, you know. So you, you can switch off. Oh, I can switch yeah, off, yeah. but then I can switch on. You can. <laughs> and we Don't thank tempt you for me. switching off. <laughs> do, you, do you have... 
a favourite Generation Game clip? Oh, it was this lady. She, she, had to, she had to play the part, I think, of the French maid who was called Phoebe. Oh, that's it. Yes. Phoebe, Do you yes. remember? Yes. She was Let's called Phoebe and she was... You can't write stuff oh. the way she did this. But Phoebe, when you come in here, your first line is at the back of the door. Uh, when you get your cigarette, your line is written on the cigarette. You read it off the cigarette, and the, the last line you do, I get, when I put Where's you in the, the cupboard, in the, in, the, in, the, in the cigarette's in the cigarette box, dear. Right, you need those. Does she need those? <laughs> French mate, the glasses on. <laughs> All right, wear your glasses, dear. No, we'll, 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 well, we'll... I can't see anything if I put them on now. Oh, I see, you've got to... <laughs> really got research people on this show. <laughs> Fridge maid who's called Daphne and blind as a bat. Anyway. <laughs> Come in, Fifi. Up in the cupboard. You always hang your coat up in the hall cupboard. <laughs> I, uh, written on that. <laughs> Is it true the thinker pose came from the generation game? Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, I did that there again for a bit of fun before we started the show rehearsal, just for the boys and the crew. The spotlight hit me yeah. and I was standing. It just, I said, I can't just stand there. That will look a bit cheesy. And it just, so not telling them, I just went into my pose. Oh. Uh, and then after they said, yeah, keep it, it was funny. It looked funny that you were standing there in the thing. Brilliant. And there again, it was born. There it was born. Yeah. And The Sun at this point, The Sun newspaper, called you the most important man in television. I mean, oh, you did really they? were riding high, yeah. Yeah, well, who <laughs> believes them? <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough, but take that one. <laughs> Nice one. I'll take that one, yes, I'll take yeah, that yeah. one. And you made a brilliant return to Generation Game in the 90s. Yes. Would you ever do it again? Well, I, I love it. It, it, may, it may be a bit old hat now. There's been yeah. so much reality, you know, I don't know. Well, we but need they to get were back wonderful. to entertainment, Bruce. Oh, yeah, well, I love entertainment. Yes, yes, me too. That's me, I love it. So, at the top of his game and the height of his popularity, Bruce quit the Generation Game and switched to ITV. Well, we've all done it, except my grandmother. She'd <laughs> rather die than watch something with adverts. <laughs> so, let's open another chapter and a brand new Brucey bullet point, which I'm calling Commercial Break. Generation game, watched by millions, loved by millions, the press adore you, you're riding high. What made you stop? 
Well, I just felt as though I'd done the show for long, and I didn't think there was more to be got out of the show. And I wanted to do something maybe a bit different. So the offer from LWT for Bruce's Big Night was yes. therefore an offer too good to refuse, really? Yes, exactly. And did you... And it was a different kind of show. But I think it would... I think it would even stand a bit of a chance now. And we did have wonderful guest well, like, stars. Well, it's extraordinary. I mean, oh. you had Elton John, Donald yeah. Part and Bette Midler. Let's have a look. what he's done to some of my dear friends in the business. I mean, look, look what he did to Michael Parkinson. Mind <laughs> you, he deserves it, but no, I mean... I <laughs> Do you like more or less? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit funny. It certainly is. But <laughs> sure the morning sun Even if never you be my spring What's up with you for goodness sake? I can't believe it looking at that clip of all the stars. Actually, critically, it didn't go down, did it? No, the, the press had a real go of it. Actually, because I'd left the generation game, and I must say, LWT at the time made it seem as though it was going to be. And if you overemphasize that something is going to be so great, you're, yeah. you can be a bit disappointed. And were you devastated when they. Yes, and they, they had a, a real go, and the ratings weren't uh, all that good. But then we persevered with the show and we finished with 14 million, which, oh, you dear. know, was, uh, was a wonderful thing to achieve at the end of it. I never regret doing it no. because it was a lovely show to do. You did something with Sammy Davis Jr. on Bruce Big Night. Yes, he was a guest, he was a guest yeah. on, that, uh, on that show. And do you still say that the, the special that you then did with him was your favourite thing ever? Oh, the, the special I did with Sammy Davis, I often look back at it and think, yeah, that was the best show I've ever done. Let's have a look. You stole my heart away oh, Makes me dream all dreams, dreams I know can never be true Seems as though I'll never be blue Sometimes I I'm happy rhythm. Sometimes I I'm blue music. My I disposition my gal who can Depends on anymore. you Dancing in the dark Till the tune ends we're dancing in the dark And it soon ends And we will face the music together Dancing in the dark Yes, dear la, 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 dee, la, dee, la. Sorry. That is about a third of that medley we did every song that was ever written and put together. It was quite something. It was I love watching it because I do think you look the happiest you've ever looked. Oh, you, yeah. You no. look like I, can't I couldn't have been happening. happier. It was, it was amazing. wonderful. Well, we can, we've seen that you can sing, you can dance, you can make us laugh. Next, you'll be telling us you can play the piano. Well, that's what I am going to do. <laughs> oh, right. You're going to do that now. I'm going to play the piano. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. With your permission. That's lovely. Permission but, granted. You have a choice. Yes. You have a choice. You can either have Grieg's Piano Concerto mm -hmm. or Misty. Grieg's Piano Concerto. <laughs> well, you're going to get Misty. Right. <laughs> Playing Misty because he evidently doesn't know how to play Grieg's Piano Concerto is Bruce Forsyth. Thank you very much.
Thank you, boys. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you very now, much. Hold on a second. What's hold that? on. Because What's the matter? what people don't know is that actually I can hold a tune. You mean you play the piano? Yes, oh yes. Well, it must be the best kept secret in show business. Yes. I, I have a little feeling that people might like it if we played something together. <laughs> you think they would? Yeah. <laughs> would you? Yes! Well, you've made me an offer I've got to put up with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. The you've got music there. as oh, well. Sorry. That's all right, darling. Right. Yeah. If you just, okay. well, just a bit further. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you just, sorry, just a bit yeah, right. further. Right. Just a bit, bit further down. There we go. What you're trying to say is you want to play this bit. Yeah. You want to be the main... Yes, please. ..the yeah. main artist in this. <clears throat> OK, fine. I can get a bit nearer. You right? OK, fine. Right. You ready? Yeah. I'll count us in. Right. A five, six, four, nine. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. No. I think i better count okay. us in. OK, sure. They're going to count me out yeah. in a minute. Right. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> into all things Forsyth. It's another Brucey bullet point. Bruce, the game show Golden Boy. Oh, dear. So, game shows. This was your big game show. We're talking... Yeah. Um, we have, I mean, so many. Play your cards right. In fact, let's have a look at some player cards right. We asked 100 taxidermists. <laughs> <laughs> We talk to everybody. <laughs> if you could practice your skills on people, would you like to stuff Bruce Forsyth? <laughs> I should read these beforehand. How many taxidermists said yes? If they could practice their skills on people, they would like to stuff Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> what do you think, Will? Well, for me, I say no. You'd say and no I yourself say no if myself. you were a taxidermist. Thank you, Will. But uh, they might have other ideas, so. Well, if yeah. I, if I had my way, I'd have him stuffed in my all any time. <laughs> So it when people, yes, yeah. so when people came yeah. in, they'd see a stuffed Bruce oh, Forsyth. Yeah. Well, that's lovely to know, dear. And I could say good morning oh, and good night. Oh, good morning and good night, and we could have a little dance as I well. I really would. All yeah. right, so how many out of 100 do you think? 37. 38? <laughs> <laughs> Did you play it? I enjoy playing your cards, right? because there again, I could have fun. Yeah. All the way through with the questions, I could have fun. You never knew what the, what the contestants were going to be like, which was always fun for me to pick on something that yeah. they did that was funny. So did you feel like you were getting away from your comedy roots a bit at this time? Yes. I, 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 when I look back, I do realise, and I, I, I know this for a fact, I did too many game shows. Mm. But you see, you could do them so quick and the money was fantastic. Was money often a decider for you? Was it hard to turn it down? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, because it was so, so quick, you see. You could do a whole series of 16 shows in two weeks. Wow. See, so you'd yeah. do two a day, four days a week. Yeah. So, and you'd, you'd done a whole series. But do you love working? Do you find it hard to say no? Do people ever think you're a workaholic? Uh, no, because I do take a lot of time off, you, you see. I go to Puerto Rico for at least 
three months every year, yeah. which keeps me fresh when I come back. I'm ready to work and that's good. So I do take it easy a lot, a lot of the time. Do you have that performer thing of, I better say yes, because somebody else might take and it might all end that we all have? No, because who else, who else could they ask? <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, fair point. <laughs> But did you feel? Did you genuinely feel that? No, no, no. I, I feel if, if, well, if, a, if a show feels good and it sounds good and the format sounds right, okay, I'll do it. Yeah, we're going to move on to our next era. Yeah, we're... I think you better. I'm yeah. running out of errors. <laughs> <laughs> the part of Sir Bruce's career I'm calling the, well... <laughs> yeah, era. That's the... <laughs> era. <laughs> shut up! Just shut! Just shut! <laughs> but really... Yeah, just yeah, I know, I've carried away. Now. Carried away. So, I think we've gathered that I'm calling this the Strictly Era. Shush! <laughs> the Strictly Era. So, you do an appearance on Have I Got News For You and you suddenly, everyone goes, wow, he's brilliant. We'd briefly, for about a year, forgotten how brilliant he is. <laughs> and you get, because you always say, oh, the phone stopped ringing and then you look at your CV and you go, well, it's for about nine months you didn't yeah. work in about 2000. And suddenly you're offered Strictly. Did you jump at the chance? Were you worried? Well, you... I was getting a tour all ready to do with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. Right. Who were all musicians under the age of 25. And I thought, with a 75-year-old in front of them, this could be quite interesting, could yeah. develop into something else. And then Strictly came along. And uh, there again, I had the wrong idea about Strictly. I thought it was going to be a comedy show right. with these contestants trying to dance they wouldn't be able to, people would be falling all over the place and I'd be amongst them almost like the generation game, picking them up Trying and doing things. Okay. But I didn't realise that there's nobody more competitive than a ballroom dancer. Ballroom dancers are, they're as competitive as any athlete, believe me, yeah. when they've got that number on their back in the old days when they were doing competitions, they wanted to win and they somehow got this into the celebrities. The celebrities right. got a little bit good at it. And then we had a different show, a show which had much more to it, that the celebrities were also being competitive. And then it turned out to be such a wonderful, wonderful show. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it just works. How it works, I don't know. There's so many different things in that show. You think, well, on paper, no, I don't think that could work. But it does. Yeah. Every little bit. And I'm on and off like a blue tail fly. <laughs> yes. It even, it, it, Let's have a look at some of the fantastic Strictly moments. To twirl you, to twirl you. Nice! Flash dance with a quick step, and all I got was a quick flash. Nice. Come on! Fancy scoring so early in the evening, right? Uh, don't tell the others. Nice. You're my favorite. <laughs> one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. That's why the lady in the train. I'm here every Saturday. <laughs> so, so just... Suddenly you're sort of doing a different thing, you're sort of presenting, like you say, and you didn't feel... Yes, I'm a presenter, a yeah. presenter in that show, which but is you... my job. Yeah. But I, I, I can't get amongst it. I can't, like a generation game, or play your cards, yeah. right? I, I do that. But it, it just works. The whole thing yeah. works. And it, it is a fabulous show in the way... Well, you do manage to put your comedy stamp on it as much as you can, I suppose. Is it, oh, yeah, as much as I can. Yeah. And do you still love it? Do you still love the business? Oh, yes, I love it. Just the... And when I walk on, like when I came on tonight, I don't feel 85. I feel 30. 35, maybe 40, as old as yeah, you. as old as me. Nearly that. I feel but, pretty old. But I don't, I don't feel that. No. I don't feel it. 
Tomorrow I might not even be able to get out of bed. But yeah. <laughs> right now, and when we first started this evening, I felt 30 again. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing that that happens, but it does because it's what performing yeah. is all about, how do you, you feel. Do you think you need it? Oh, yes, need I, I, I need it. It's a part of me. Yeah. I'm a very relaxed person in many ways, much more relaxed than people imagine. Mm. Uh, but I do need it. I yeah. need that Philip of uh, walking on and feeling good. And because. if it's been a good night, if it's been a good show, then you feel great. Yeah. There's no feeling in the world like pleasing an audience and knowing they've liked you yeah. and that they've liked you like when I do the one man show for you know, two hours yeah. and you know you've left them and they're still enthusiastic. And you got the chance to then be knighted, be Sir Bruce, of course. Yes, well, that was, that was quite something. It's Did a, that mean a lot? This is my little knight's badge, actually. Is it? Is yes, it? that's my knight's badge. Oh, wow, look, there you are, being knighted. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That was the most wonderful day. Yeah. Most one that was everything happened that year. It was a, the show had done well. Everything else had gone gone so good, and then to get that as well. At the, and do you um, like being called Sir Bruce? Uh, Does it well, feel sort of your to life me, complete? to me, to be called Sir Bruce is a, a lot more friendly than being called Mister Forsyth. You yes, know, Mr. Forsyth can be quite, you know, but when it's something friendly about yeah. Sir Bruce. But I never, I never say to people, if they you say it, if it. they say it, it's very, very nice. Yeah. And you gave me a curtsy when I came on, so. Rightly so, I That think. showed a bit of respect. But showed his royalty. You haven't called me Sir Bruce yet, but maybe you will before I'm we... so sorry, Sir Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's come to the point of yes. my final question. And there's so much I could still ask. I want to, I was going to say, take you away and continue chatting to you, but that might sound wrong and unnerving no. for you. But no. <laughs> there's so much I would love to talk about. And I'm, I'm not getting bored. OK. I love people talking about me. Good. <laughs> yeah. um, if I have to ask one final question, oh, one I'll, final ask, question. I'll ask this. Yes. What, are there two character traits about you that you think have particularly endeared you to such a long and successful career? I love to make contact with an audience. Contact is vital to me yeah. because without them, I've got nothing. I've got so, nothing to offer. I try to the make audience. them think, you know, to think that uh, I'm grander than I am. Right. Um, <laughs> and when they know that I'm not grander than I think I am, that's a funny thing yeah. for, for me to play on. I love yeah. them to laugh when they shouldn't do. Yeah. Oh, and to thank you for taking the time to talk to me. It's been such an honour, honestly. And thank it's... you, a personal thank you, for all your hard work and all the joy you've certainly given me. I'm sure you'll all agree it's been an absolute honour to go through Bruce's career and relive so many highlights. No one can dispute how hard he's worked, how talented he is and how much pleasure he's brought millions of people. And to think it all began as a small boy back... Actually, do you know what? I realise I've never asked you. Well, uh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from, I'm from London. Yeah. North London. North London. North London. Hey. Hey. North London. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, my father, he had a garage there. Well, or a garage, you might say. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, maybe, yeah. But yeah. Oh, where are you from? Hampshire. Oh, Hampshire. <laughs> Is that where hurricanes hardly ever happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, Miranda, I know we're getting to the end of the show, but there's no need to go all Queen Bodicea with me. <laughs> Boudicca. <laughs> Pardon? Well, it's Boudicca, Queen Boudicca, isn't it? Oh, mm. I suppose it's in the uh, pronunciation. Oh, to pronunciation. <laughs> well, this is uh, beginning to sound like uh, the intro to a song. Isn't it? Yeah. Do you think the uh, audience are ready for this? Well... <laughs> we'll soon find out. Won't we? We'll soon find out. Here we go. Boudicca. 
I say either. Well, I say either. I say neither. And I say neither. Either. Either. Neither. Neither. Let's call the whole thing off. I love potatoes. Well, I like potatoes. I like tomatoes. And I like tomatoes. Potato. Potato. Tomato. Tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. But oh, if we call the whole thing off, then we must part. And oh, if we have to part, that would break my heart. Well, I like pyjamas. And I like pyjamas. I'll still wear pyjamas. Well, I'll give up pyjamas. But Pyja look, look, hold on. Yeah. Enough, enough of these word games. Okay, okay. We'll just do the dance. Love to dance. <laughs> <laughs> you start, you start over there, OK? <laughs> Up, two, three, four. Thank you.